everyone, this is Miff, your life and performance coach, and welcome to the Actually You Can podcast. On this show, we discuss strategies for growth for ambitious individuals so you can spark and initiate your next evolution. You'll hear from inspiring guests who will share their journeys, challenges, and lessons learned. And I'll be sharing insights and actionable takeaways from my Aligned Results Framework that will help you to align your goals, mindset, and strategies to reach your highest potential. Be sure to hit subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to so you can easily find this podcast again and stay updated with new episodes dropping every week. Today, I'm talking about biohacking with Christian Jordanoff, a health consultant who specializes in optimizing physical and mental performance. In this episode, we'll discuss everything there is to know about biohacking from its benefits to its practical applications. Christian will also share his best tips for optimizing your health and well-being. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Thanks for joining us, Christian. It's so wonderful to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me, Miff. I'm really glad to be a part of what you're doing. It looks really awesome and I love your energy. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. Thank you so much. And we're going to be talking specifically about mental performance and how the audience can improve their mental performance. And before we jump into that topic, I would love for you to share a little bit about yourself. Who is Christian and what's some of the work that you do? Sure. Um, I am. What I do right now is I'm a health consultant. I help people generally with complex chronic health problems that have, they've not really had success in addressing through the various uh, conventional means. And I also help some people that just want to live longer, perform better, um, and optimize their health, right? A lot of, most people don't actually realize that they're leaving a lot on the table in terms of uh, how, how well they're sleeping or recovering from workouts or how well their brain works uh, and all those other things in between. Uh, most of us are leaving a lot on the table. So I teach people how to find the little chinks in the armor, get those polished up so that they don't become cracks in, in 10, 20 years time, which uh, when you, I suppose when you're young, when I was young in my 20s and early 30s, I didn't care so much about the future. But you get to a certain age, I think over 20, well, I guess 30, uh, 30 plus, you start to, to want not just to perform well, but to perform well probably for another 20, 30 years at least. And I think more and more of us, knowing that our life expectancy is higher, we want to perform um, maybe into our 80s, geez, maybe into our 90s. So what I do is I, we use lab testing, uh, advanced hormone testing, urine testing, hair testing, poop testing, all sorts of really cool stuff to identify hidden metabolic imbalances people usually have. And then we address them with diet supplementation, stress reduction strategies, which is extremely important, and um, lifestyle interventions. So that's kind of a little bit of what I do. I've also written one book on autism and children's health. That was my first book. And I just started writing my second book this week, which should be out in, uh, I'm hoping, 2nd of January 2024, which will be for adults to it is going to be, and uh, the reason I'm saying it now is because the more shows I announce it on, the more pressure there will be to actually get it done by that lofty goal date. Um, and it will be all about shortcuts to, to better health, uh, longevity, and mental performance. That's what the book will be about. Amazing. And you've said it on this show and what I love to do is hold people accountable to their goals. So don't be surprised if I reach out to you on the 1st of Jan on and be like, look day. forward to seeing your book. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I, I, you know, I really feel I can, I can do it. My first book I wrote in eight months. I researched, uh, wrote the manuscript, edited it myself, worked with an editor, and then I figured out absolutely every single thing, how to do it myself in terms of book formatting, all that stuff. Except the, the, some of the, the illustrations and the book cover, I did absolutely everything else myself in eight months. Now, I used a lot of, like I was telling you earlier, a lot of um, nootropics, which are substances, herbs, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, etc., that improve brain function. So my, my knowledge of those has obviously improved over the last three and a half years. So I figure if I can do it, my first book in eight months, 
I can surely do my second one in three, three and a half. I mean, we're three minutes, 45 seconds into this show, and it's already very obvious that you live and breathe performance. And so I'm interested to hear a bit more. How did you get into this line of work? Have you always been interested in how you can squeeze what sounds out like that little 1% out of yourself or to test your boundaries? How did this all start for you? I wish, I wish the story was that sort of pretty, but the story is not that pretty. I basically, since my kind of um, mid to late teens, I kind of fell in with the wrong group of people uh, as a kid, basically, and that that had a pretty, pretty deleterious influence on, on a lot of uh, things in my life. And um, basically my 20s, I dropped out of college multiple times and at least three times, I think. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I was kind of working bar jobs and just kind of just not really doing much of anything, stopping things, starting things, and just looking to have fun, party, this kind of stuff. And it was at excuse me, around the age of 30, early 30s, when I realized I'd done a lot of damage to my body, diet-wise, lifestyle-wise, and I needed to to figure out quickly, how can I repair this damage and uh, claw back the time I wasted? And that's when I, I got into uh, all this longevity stuff, biohacking, how to, uh, you know, how to optimize cellular function in the body, which is the basis for any any performance right so it, for, for your gut to perform well you need the cells of the gut to be in optimal health right uh for your brain likewise for your to to be able to to you know exercise and recover well uh, and have good energy levels and no fatigue you need to optimize the mitochondria inside your cells so i started digging into all of these things and uh the way i do it is i like i said with my book eight months i just immersed myself into autism and children's health so with that stuff that was actually before i wrote my book i, I just got into new tropics um uh, longevity all that research and a lot of bio i was uh, influenced by a lot of biohackers so i was experimenting with dozens of different supplements and i believe over the last several years after that i have come to it, it's like they say the more you understand the subject matter the simpler things become so i've come to understand how to shortcut the process right uh of again in, in improving health improving mental performance and um what was the other one <laughs> longevity of course most important yeah, at the end of the day we want to not just do this because you can take you can take even cocaine right or <clears throat> or ritalin or some drug that is mind stimulating so you'll be able to put put in like 12 hours of work at the computer solid with just a few bathroom breaks, you can do all of this, right? But you're going to be really depleted and exhausted. And if you do that for a while, you're going to be like, well, that's horrible. That's a horrible experience. What we want to, to do is add ears to our life, but add life to those ears. Because if you're like a lot of my, my grandparents and a lot of older folks today, the last 10, 20 years of their life is really nothing to write home about. And I, I personally... I'm not saying everybody should think this, but I personally would rather die at the age of 70 uh, and having lived a well-balanced uh, life and, and active and not being impeded in any way than 80 or 85 if the last uh, 10, 10, 15 years are going to be, uh, you know, debilitated. So, but with what I've learned, I believe that we can not only live to easily, barring accidents and freak stuff, uh, we can live, live to easily 85 nine, to 95 easily um, and have really good performance uh, along the way in terms of again mind, body, how how we're how we're like dealing with toxins. All of that can be done, and it's as simple as I'll just break it down in two things. Really, is reducing toxic exposures and and eliminating the toxins we hold is one thing. Let's package that up together and ensuring that your nutritional needs are met. Uh, in and by that I mean you need to, the body needs to get the, an abundance of not just energy, not just carbs and whatever else, but nutrients, right? So this is a big factor. You need to get all the nutrients in abundance to support all your bodily processes, right? So detoxify, re reduce toxic exposures, and uh, get energy and nutrients into the body on a consistent basis. I think those two things, if you can get those down pat, there's very little 
again, outside of uh, freak accidents, uh, other stuff like that, there's very little that can really uh, uh, impede that process of growing, he- uh, he- uh, growing old in a healthy way. And I would love to dig into that in more detail in a sec. But before we do so, you mentioned that what started, I guess, this inquiry was you were looking at a way to undo the damage that you felt that you'd done to your body in your 20s. And so what sort of yeah. signs were you getting that you had damaged and there was something that needed to be fixed? Well, here's the other thing. When you're 31, let's say, you still don't feel the damage. So yeah, I'm 33. I was, when I, I'm feeling a little bit crinkly, but I, right. I've still got some life in me. <laughs> oh, yeah. you yeah, At 33, you can still pull in, pull in all-nighters and stuff like that. You can do that <laughs> stuff. Um, but... Here's the thing, right? So when I when I turned 30, I decided well one of the things that was on my bucket list is to do a Thai boxing fight. I'd never I trained Thai boxing before, but I'd never done a fight. And it was always on my bucket list. I was like, I really want to do this just to see if I can, if I have the balls. And at 30 years of age, I decided I'm gonna train for in that year and do a Thai boxing fight. So I started training. And then I also I also decided from the first of or it was more like the tenth of January that year is I'm gonna do all of this on a fully plant based diet, right? So no no meat, no animal products. And before that I was I, I was, had done that before for a while, but I decided that's a good idea for whatever reason. And during the course of that year, I was drinking a lot of soy protein shakes and a lot of doing a lot of things that were still very. Um, for example, for men, there's their soy is very estrogenic, so that can really mess with your testosterone and all that stuff. And yeah. and it's it's not really good for women either, but that's beside the point. So I was doing that. I was training um, eight eight sessions a week, sometimes twice a day. Uh, sometimes I was in an office. I was going running to to train, coming back working all day. No no cool down, no stretching after training. Then doing it that in the evening. I had met my now wife at the time, so we were out with her. We were partying with the with the other fighters and the coach uh, after sessions, you know, drinking and and whatever else, smoking cigarettes, right? And all of this at the age of thirty to thirty one, um, I didn't feel it. You know what I mean? It's not it's not the kind of thing you really feel when you're young. You're running on on stress hormones, you're on adrenaline, on cortisol. Uh, and you're fueled by a lot of these, you know, maybe energy drinks, uh, Gatorades, Lucozades, whatever else. So you don't really, I, I wasn't really feeling it per se. But when I started focusing more on the health things, I I started to understand the the deeper down, quote unquote, molecular mechanisms of what my diet and lifestyle were doing. So while I was still feeling good and I was lucky, I was a very healthy kid. I was exposed to a lot of dirt and a good microbiome as a kid. So that protected me. I was not, uh, I was maybe on antibiotics two, three times in my whole life. So that, um, in spite of all my stupidity and bad choices, I, uh, the, the universe kept me alive and well. Uh, well, I did, I did break my leg once in my, when I was 25 and I had a few other accidents. But again, that's the universe kept, kept me alive and well through that. So when I understood the, molecular mechanisms of what I was doing, what alcohol was doing, what cigarettes were doing, what the, the non-organic diet, the, just, I never bought an organic, certified organic product, food in my entire 20s. I never bought one thing that was certified organic. So all of the pesticides, the poisons, the fluoride in the water. And when I started understanding what all of these tiny little things, in, on their own, they're tiny little things, but when you, when you package them into the package of your diet and lifestyle it's we're talking dozens and sometimes hundreds of, of things you know like cycling cycling um my bike to work in traffic that was a big source of toxic exposure uh, having my mobile phone not on airplane uh, not on airplane mode next to my head when sleeping just a ton of, or keeping it into my pocket next to my you know so all of these little things, I started to understand, okay, that's harmful in that way. That's harm- And I'm like, man, I want to have kids. I do not want to. And I also don't want to turn out like my grandparents. Um, uh, God love them, you know. God bless them. So it, this was how I got into it. Luckily, it wasn't some serious debilitating fatigue or illness or some other thing that made me rethink and, and revisit. And also the other thing was also meeting my wife and understanding that, yeah, soon I, I will want to have children. I cannot 
I, this, I have to get out from kid mode and get into man mode, adult mode. And uh, I think that for a lot of guys, we, we only start getting out of that mode after we hit 30. So I'm not really blaming myself for it. I think that's just probably the way we're designed or something like that. Yeah. And it's interesting. It sounds like education was really a key to unlock yes. all of that for you. And so yes. I think there's so much available information out there. You only need to scroll Instagram to learn that something could be good for you. And then two seconds later, it's bad for you or X, Y, Z. How did you start to find, I guess, I don't want to say the right knowledge, but the knowledge that you felt was most impactful for you and that has helped you on this journey? Yeah, that's a good question because I'll tell you, there's a lot of, uh, first of all, I can understand why your general average person is very confused and, and, and um, what's the other word? Not uh, confused and um, uh, clueless about what to do, right? A lot of people are not just clu uh, clueless, but they also get confused by spinach is good, spinach is bad, milk is good, milk is bad, all that stuff, right? And I can guarantee you that there's a lot of practitioners, practitioners out there that are Maybe not clueless, definitely not clueless, but definitely confused. And I myself, every few weeks, I'm like reevaluating all the paradigms I believe in. Even today, I'm reading this entirely new concept. Well, it's not very new, but to me, it's new of German new medicine and how diseases, quote unquote, develop in organs because of certain uh, conflicts like traumas, like fears, uh, separations, uh, territorial things. Loss, uh, potential loss of a partner or a loved one or a child, whatever else. And these manifest in the organ and correspondingly into the brain. And the guy's talking about when you have um, um, pneumonia, it's, it's a healing mechanism. And so he's like, all the fungi and the bacteria and viruses, they're actually the part of the healing process. And then before that, I was, I was deep into the research, uh, researching another guy who's very well revered in the health space by some. And he's all about, you have to keep the gut as sterile as possible. He even advocates antibiotics and is no, he doesn't think probiotics are good. So I, I went from that to this. I'm like, oh, again today. Oh my God. I have to reevaluate everything I know. So it's, it's not easy, but I, I am lucky that I somehow stumbled on some really, really smart people in the functional medicine world, my, where I did my, uh, my main certification that I consider functional diagnostic nutrition, they, interestingly, when I, when I started doing that, a lot of the things that I was into already, they approved of like certain other modalities, certain other practitioners, authors, diets. So I was glad that that, that sort of group of people were, we were in my, at least similar to me on the right track of things. So I think uh, having, being, exposed to that group of people has really helped me develop more as a practitioner because we sometimes share case studies like if you have a tough uh, tough case with a client with a very serious sort of thing like let's say autoimmunity or multiple sclerosis we share inputs and someone ch always chimes in with what they did for a client and it's it's been really useful and there's a lot of um, a, a lot of it has just been just digging through research and trying to use clinical experience so you're using research evidence, but you're also using clinical experience. I think that's where a lot of people learn learn good stuff. Let's say, final example, if you're a 23-year-old dude with, you know, giant muscles, you're strong, you can run, you can lift, you can jump, you can swim, and then you get you get your awesome personal trainer qualification, and then a 35-year-old lady comes to you, and maybe she's had a kid or she's, she wants to have kids, and now you, you start telling her, oh, you got to go paleo, low carb. Uh, oh, let's get you squatting, deadlifting. You're gonna, you know, da -da -da -da. and you're, you're, you're a hammer. She's a nail, but she's not a nail. Maybe she's another thing. You know what I mean? Like you need to really. So, uh, and then if you if you wreck, uh, I don't mean it this in this bad way, but if you wreck a person's health through bad practitionerism, you quickly learn to be a little bit more humble and not. If something worked for you. That doesn't mean it to work for them. So this clinical experience we gain over the years really allows us to take everybody uh, and gauge. You know, so, some people are extremely sensitive. Like I, I have one client, she takes two, three milligrams of zinc and two hours later she's dizzy and, and, and feels horrible for the whole day and anxious, mm -hmm. right? Two, 
and I take 60 milligrams of zinc someday, and my wife can take someday 60 milligrams. So everybody has certain specific, specific sensitivities and, and strong points, weak points, and you have to really take those into account. And that only comes with clinical experience. No amount of books or uh, studies uh, that you read is ever going to replace that. Yeah, and I think that's super powerful for people to remember as well is everyone is unique. Sure, there are some general principles, but at the end of the day, everyone is unique. And I think there's a, a mm -hmm. lot of power in when you're talking to any sort of professional, gauging their level of open-mindedness. Like I've definitely been to GPs before and I'll say, hey, I've been working with a naturopath and then suddenly they don't want a bar of me. And that's <laughs> always a, a big warning sign. Oh, and like if you're yeah. dismissive of something completely, I think there's too much I guess, research and evidence of different modalities also being effective, that if someone's blatantly ignoring it, that's a red flag for me. Absolutely. But to your point, I also think there needs to be some evidence to support some people's claims. Everyone can have an opinion. It just so happens that social media spreads people's opinions further than maybe some should go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's I like celery juice. It, yeah. what, oh my gosh. What, Let's talk about celery juice. Up um, with a... Yeah. <laughs> One of my clients asked me, what do you think of celery juice? And my first inst instinct was, I think it's BS. Most of these things on, on that are making the rounds tend to be bs -y, or they or they, they, start, they start out as um, um, uh, from the right place, but they seem to be perverted. Like if, for example, the, uh, anyway, let, 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 I'll get into examples later if, if, if I remember. But um, celery juice, my personal opinion is that when, when you juice the celery, there's a lot of potassium in, in that juice <clears throat> and, and some other electro electrolytes and minerals. So my personal opinion is that people, um, their metabolism is so slow due to various stressors, toxins, poor diet over the years, accumulation of toxicity, liver congestion, uh, depressed thyroid function, and so on and so on and so forth, that when you drink the celery juice, that potassium, it seems to speed up the uh, quote-unquote deoxidation rate. Uh, it's like, um, uh, oh, we, we, that, that's basically a, a synonymous for the metabolic rate. So it seems to like give you a boost because you're adding that potassium, right? So I believe that's what pe is making people feel better. Um, and I definitely have no, no problem if somebody's feeling, it's feeling good with, with celery juice or, or apple cider vinegar or you know what I mean, Wh whatever else, like lemon water. But for the most part, I think we have to really uh, think about how, why, why does, first of all, why do you feel bad? It's usually lack of energy or some type of deficiency or some type of toxicity, right? If we can figure out those things, then we don't have to experiment. Let me try. Let me try uh, green smoothies for a month or a week. Let me try this. Let me try um, maybe you know soaking my feet in Epsom salts. Uh, oh, I mean maybe all those things are making a dent in your health. But it's better to to have a more comprehensive approach. You know, make sure you're eating enough fats uh, and not not too many of the wrong fats, which is a thing. Make sure you're eating enough carbohydrates. So many people are on this uh, low carb, paleo, keto bandwagon right now that they're destroying their metabolism. Like so many people that I've seen that have done low carb for an extended period of time, their thyroid is a mess. And that means your body is downregulating your, how much energy you're, you're consuming. So as the years go by, you slow down. So you, 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 the, if you eat the same calories, you start actually putting on Wait, because you're, you're eating the same, but you're burning less because the, the thyroid is like the accelerated pedal uh, of the metabolism and it's taking the foot off the gas because it's when you, when you take out a nutrient like carbs, you're signaling to the body, whether you believe you are or not, you're signaling to the body um, that times are not plentiful. They're not a, there's not an abundance of food. Usually when there's a lot of carbs in the environment, it's probably summer, there's a lot of fruit. And that is a signal to your body, yay, happy days. And when, when, you, eat, when you eat carbs, you're really signaling to the body that, um, you know, I can, I, I'll have energy, maybe I can find the mate and reproduce. So a lot of people that are having, and this is another rabbit hole that probably we don't have time to discuss, but a lot of younger people that are having trouble um, um, 
you know, having kids, a lot of that is down to uh, to the body sh shutting down these quote unquote nice to have functions like fertility, higher thought, experiencing joy, altruism. These things, as soon as your your energy levels are, uh, your body senses that your energy levels are um, are lower. AKA it could be a famine, it could be winter, it could be a crisis, a war. Then it starts shutting down, quote unquote, non-essential things for survival. And again, one of those things is fertility. Another thing is uh, higher cognitive functions. So we we get this mis misnomer that the the ascetics in the mountains that are fasting and drinking water and and just breathing and st uh, sun gazing they're really connected to to spirit or whatever else but it's truly to, to be able to experience the the beauty and the joy of life and be connected with spirit the the machine the antenna that connects you to to these other dimensions via the brain and your nervous system this receiver this television or radio receiver which is what the body is at the end of the day it has to be in good nick it has to be functioning really well and you take away some some nutrients out of that and you're deficient and you throw in some toxins the receiver doesn't work well so you cannot connect to these higher energies and you cannot get those amazing downloads like my my my, my idea for my book came to me three days ago on on september the 11th in the morning i was having my coffee in front of my red light therapy lamp and I got it's, it's like I got a download from heaven and I got on my phone in my note taking app and within the next couple of hours I pretty much had planned the whole book out yes it's going to be rearranged chopped and changed some things will be added some things will be taken away but in the space of a couple of hours and what did I have for breakfast I had a liter of full fat milk and three massive tablespoons of honey that was my breakfast and then the coffee of course and without this energy, I, I, don't ex I don't expect to get a lot of ideas. I won't be able to read for four hours or work at the computer for six, eight hours. It's just, I, I, where, where are you getting the energy? You're getting it from your bones, your muscles, your skin. Your cortisol is demolishing your body to create that glucose that your brain must have, must have. Sorry, those, well, I didn't expect that rant to be that long. I, I um, apologize. I love a good rant. I have some wonderful guests who go on the most beautiful tangent and I love it. Mm. And I especially love how <laughs> you described the body in this sense. I think even just people taking that perspective that your body is literally a vehicle for you to access all these other dimensions and, and get these downloads and stuff like that, simply by people acknowledging that their body is a vehicle and just like hopefully people's cars, they need to look after it for it to perform. I think could be a game changer. I think I see so often, I mean, I, I, I'm in the health and fitness space where people are trying to lose weight or they're trying to exercise really hard to make them look themselves a certain way or they're not eating enough. They're, they're punishing themselves and restricting themselves to make them look yeah. and feel a certain way when in reality, if they took care of themselves, they would actually get better results in the first place. And so mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear as well from your perspective, you've mentioned the term biohacking. What's biohacking? To be honest, I, I kind of forgot what exactly how they defined it, but bi basically yeah. biohacking is short, short circuiting a process or short cutting a process, which I suppose my book will be shortcuts to, to this and that, yeah. you know, longevity, mental performance. I suppose from another perspective, you could call them biohacks, but I, I believe the, the term biohacking, um, it's a little bit intimidating to the average person. Like, oh, I'm going to have to like wear crazy weird electrodes and like zzz, uh you know shock my 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 neurons into submission and use you know weird the gadgets and devices it's not really that biohacking is just taking you know in in computer i guess in computer science or programming or the the computer speak hacking is to to hack something is to like cobble something together that gets the job done faster right mm -hmm. than, than if you do it the right way right there's what that's one way of sort of describing it so to me biohacking is let, let me give you an example if you were in a very dark northern climate or it's it's the the middle of winter when you wake up in the morning generally our biology is used to um being out in the sun and that being out in the sun all day from the early morning, almost from sunrise, pretty much, 
uh, uh, 20,000 years ago, let's say, uh, that the body uses that to, to set the circadian rhythm. And if we don't uh, get exposed to light in the morning, as, as the body is kind of used to or expects, that can really mess our um, circadian rhythm, meaning we might have trouble sleeping in, in the evening. So what I do as a biohack is when I wake up in the morning, ideally I'll go on the balcony and uh, expose myself to sunlight. That's the ideal thing to do. But what I also do, let's say it's winter, it's overcast, or I wake up uh, before the, the sun rises, I have a red light therapy lamp near infrared and uh, red light. And I turn that on and I I stare, not, not that I stare into it, but I shine my face for 20 minutes with it. And that gets a lot of that light that the, the full spectrum of the sun includes red light, infrared, obviously ultraviolet, blue, green. So that gives me that spectrum of light and it, it sends some signals to my body, you know, it's, it, because light is a nutrient as well. So using uh, uh, red light like that is a biohack to to get some of the benefits you would as as you would from exposing yourself to the sun in the morning. So that's one thing, right? Uh, other things I consider biohacks is taking supplements, right? If you, if, for example, one of my new, new, new latest favorite supplements is vitamin E. And the reason vitamin E is so important is it protects us uh, from the harmful effects of polyunsaturated fatty acids. We know the seed oils, the vegetable oils like canola, sunflower, rapeseed, um, corn oil, soybean oil. These are, We know they're very harmful. More and more people are waking up to the fact that they're very harmful. So uh, in some perverted way, those oils are also the best sources of vitamin E. And it's most likely because the seeds contain the, the oils and they contain the vitamin E to prevent it from, from to prevent the oil from becoming rancid during the time the seed is waiting to germinate and you know until springtime. So they extract the vitamin E from, from these oils. Now when you're taking a lot of these oils, they're causing a lot of inflammation and damage. So adding vitamin E, I believe, to most people's um, uh, uh, supplement program is certainly a really, really good idea because most of us have consumed way too many of them. Even if you stop now, let's say you stop consuming them now, these things are in your body for something like four years. I've heard up to seven years. They could be in there. And in, during that time, they're inflammatory in nature. Some of these get turned into <clears throat> genuinely, the, the body gets, turns them into me, mediators of inflammation called like uh, um, costanoids, thromboxanes, leukotrienes. There, there's, actually, these uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids become inflammatory causing agents in the body. So vitamin E can help to protect against the, the damage created through this um, inflammatory process. So for, to me, that's a biohack. Instead of now having to eat a bunch of nuts, which also contain a lot of these oils, it's not just the seeds, the seed oils that contain them, the seeds and the nuts that we eat also contain these polyunsaturated fatty acids. So I would prefer to get my vitamin E from a purified, extracted source. With the, it usually comes with a little bit of vegetable oil, but it's so little um, uh, relative to how much vitamin E you're getting. So I'd rather do that than have to eat, you know, 100 grams of sunflower seeds to get you know, 40, uh, 50 milligrams of vitamin E. I can get three times that amount with one little pill that I take with my meal and Bob's your uncle. That's one, uh, that's a couple of examples. That's a lot of sunflower seeds. <laughs> and they're two really great examples mm -hmm. as well. And I'd love to hear specifically on the mental performance side of things. What are some biohacks that you're currently utilizing? So for now, now that I'm, into book writing mode, things change. I, I, I seem to be waking up earlier today. I think I woke up something like 5 a.m. It's, it's 10, it's 10 a.m. now. So I, I woke up five hours ago and I, I love caffeine. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't work for everybody, but um, the, the, the trick with caffeine is you want to take it with something that will slow down how quickly it gets metabolized. I, for that purpose, I use full fat milk. Uh, I, I prefer to use cream. Full fat organic cream. It's also delicious. It's a great way to start the day, and um, uh, even even a bit of butter. That slows down how quickly the the caffeine enters your system, 
and it allows you for a more steady sort of drip of caffeine. Now, you can do things without caffeine, but when you're doing a, a project that is very linear in nature, like writing a book, researching something, coffee really helps to keep your mind in that linear state. So I don't intend on cutting down my coffee consumption. I'll take a break after the book is published. Um, so I do that. And then I, uh, another thing I take with my coffee always, or, or at least when I remember, is L-theanine, which is an amino acid, which is found in green tea. And that, that's the reason people believe green tea gives you this calm boost as opposed to some people get a more jittery boost from coffee. So theanine, it, um, it gives you, um, it, it's kind of, um, it, it has a, not, not a sedative effect, but it's an anxiolytic. So it, it reduces sort of tension, anxiety, but it allows you to use it during the day without getting sleepy. So that's a really awesome supplement. And then one, one, uh, one that is really amazing, it's called Alpha GPC. Now it stands for something much longer, which is something like Alpha glycos or something uh, phosphorylcholine, <laughs> but it's based on choline, which is technically a B vitamin, choline. I think it's B8 or B10, I can't remember, B8, I think, perhaps. So choline is a lot of things that boost mental performance, neurotropics, as we call them. They're based on either uh, adding choline to the body or inhibiting the breakdown of choline in, in, in the brain and central nervous system. So alpha GPC is my current one I'm using because I, I bought a literal half a kilogram of it in bulk. That's how much I like it. <laughs> and then another one that I really like is CDP choline, also known as CT choline. That one, it's gotten a bit more expensive over the last three years, but that one is so good. So both of these, they've also done studies with uh, stro uh, stroke victims, Alzheimer's uh, patients, so it, both of these are really good for helping to repair the brain after stroke, for helping folks with dementia to um, just, in, in, it, it really is just a, it's almost like adding uh, 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 building blocks for the brain, for neurons, right? So the, it, obviously if something uh, has that kind of effect on a person with, stro with a stroke or with Alzheimer's, you can bet your bottom dollar that it, it will have other positive effects in healthy people. In fact, I, I, I was looking at a study yesterday on, on alpha GPC in athletes. They've, they've done, they've done um, studies in athletes. I can't exactly remember what the benefits were, but there was athletic improvements. Because at the end of the day, you have to remember, mind, brain, and body are actually one. We just, for academic purposes, we d delineate between the, the body systems and, and we, we classify things, you know, skeletal, muscu muscular, muscular system, cardiovascular, but it's all one thing. So if you improve the brain function, you're improving the, the command center of the body, of course you're gonna improve how, your reflex time, uh, you know, how, uh, how quickly you react, how quickly uh, you make decisions under pressure. So these two are my favorites. They're not cheap, but other ways you can add choline to your diet is egg yolks are a good source. And there's other B vitamins in there, which are very important as well, because you need, uh, for all of these things, the kind of the bedrock or the system that supports all of this is the energy production system, which B vitamins are a great part of. So uh, you can't really, it's like you might, you might have a Bugatti or a Ferrari, but if you, don't, if you don't have energy to run it, it's just, you know, something you show your friends on your phone. Here, check out this, it's at home. Look how awesome it is, right? So you want to run the body. You, you, you want to support the energy production system with B vitamins. But then uh, choline from, like I said, egg yolks uh, is a good source. And liver can be a good source of that. So those are a couple. Um, I, you could get really advanced with this. There's herbs. There's amino acids. Another, actually, a couple of amino acids I really like is, for one, tyrosine. Which, so amino acids are the building blocks of protein, as folks probably know. And some of them are used to make neurotransmitters in the brain. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter that we kind of associate with motivation, getting stuff done, joy. Just really, it's, it, 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 you, you really associate that uh, with the opposite of what, let's say, fatigue and depression would be associated with, right? So uh, L-tyrosine, 
It's very cheap. It's the amino acid, which is a precursor to dopamine. There's a few steps along the way, but it, it, that gets converted into to dopamine. And interestingly, tyrosine is also used to make thyroid hormone, which is also another, like I said, it's like the accelerator. The thyroid is the accelerator of the metabolism. So if you have more thyroid hormones, generally your you know your metabolism will be will be higher and you'll be utilizing the nutrients you consume in a better way. You'll be producing energy better. So tyrosine is a really awesome one uh, that I, I don't take every day nowadays because I believe I'm pretty topped up on a lot of these things. But uh, usually you can start like with half a gram to a gram of that over the course of, let's say, a few weeks, two, two three weeks. And then you can taper it, let's say, on, on work days. You can take a bit and then take breaks. You kind of will feel when, you, when you're less motivated, more motivated. So those are basic things that, well, they're, they're basic, but they're super powerful. And I think yeah, a nice B complex to round it all out, like I said, if you don't eat enough egg yolks and enough muscle meat and enough liver to get all those B vitamins, a nice B complex in the morning with breakfast can really be the icing on the cake on this. It's a small nootropic stack, but it's pretty damn powerful. I love it. I've written down all of them. And <laughs> It's interesting that the supplements you mentioned, like I've seen people who drink long blacks with full cream and I'm like, where did that come from? They go, oh, I've just thought it, I've seen it somewhere. And I was like, oh, this starts to make sense. Like you've probably seen it somewhere. This is maybe the intention of it. So yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of things are clicking as you're talking about this. These are really great supplements as well. And I'm interested to hear, I'm not sure if you get this a lot in your space too, but I often find that people are looking for a supplement they can take that will mean that they don't have to change significant lifestyle factors. So for example, I'm assuming taking up this whole stack won't make up for your shitty night's sleep in terms of your mental performance. And so I'm interested to hear from you, what are the sort of big lifestyle implicators on mental performance? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I, I, I was about to go on a rant about how th- this is m- much more important than the, the stacks and the nootropics and the supplements. Yeah, cool. But, um, now, you know, I just wanted to answer your question more succinctly and not go on another <laughs> tirade. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it's such an important... Um, such an important question because yes some of these things can let's say if i don't if i don't have a good night's sleep or something like that i will take more things if i if i have to do you know podcast interviews or work with clients or whatever else i will take some extra extra stuff and it it generally does help you get through the day you feel not as great but it will get you through the day um the reason you don't want to rely just on these things is f- exactly for for uh for for the the purpose of of your question right is because yes they will mask a bad lifestyle let's say you you had a few drinks you went to bed bed late or you skipped uh dinner or you had something bad for dinner today you can mask that maybe tomorrow maybe the next week maybe for the next 5 years you can mask all of these uh net negative lifestyle decisions but eventually they will come back to bite you and when when you're masking uh cognitive decline with supplements yes some of these are protective supplements right so alpha gpc cdp choline they can repair uh neurons and stuff like that but you're you're masking the onslaught causing the 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 decline then if something happens and you, let's say you stop you stop buying the supplements or you just you, you the the straw breaks the camel's back um you might be in a world of hurt. You might be 45 and you can't remember where you put your car keys. And then you realize your car keys are in your pocket. And then you realize that you, you, were, you weren't about to go to the car. You were about to, you know, go to the bathroom and, you know, look for your toothbrush or something like that. So you don't want that to happen. We, uh, we're having earlier and earlier incidents of, they call it early onset Alzheimer's disease. And the reason for that is because of, again, toxic, a lot of toxic exposure, a lot of poor health in the general population and too many products eaten with seed oils. That's one of the biggest, I believe, one of the biggest causal factors there. So to to, to begin with, you have to focus on, on better sleep. To improve your sleep, you need to focus on reducing stress. To, to reduce stress, you may have to reevaluate things that you do on a daily basis. Are they really worth doing? And there's, there's cert, uh, there are certain things around sleep hygiene. You may want to improve that. 
will reduce the stress. For example, uh, the, the blue light at night thing, the, the looking at your phone screen or working late at night. Sometimes these things are, are inescapable. But what I do, let's say, uh, if I have to be at the computer to finish a project at 10 in the evening, I have uh, blue blocking red lens glasses. So these are yellow for the daytime and I have red ones for the night. I never, I never go a day without wearing them before sleep. And then we have blue, uh, blue lights during the day or standard light bulbs. And then when the evening approaches, we turn off the regular light bulbs and we have red LEDs, which are super cheap, and we turn those on. So that reduces uh, sort of the circadian rhythm disruption that you would get from all the bright lights. And then, of course, when you have to look at your phone, your, your eyes are protected as well. And if you have to work on the PC or the computer, same thing. So that actually goes a long way to lower your, your cortisol in the evening, right? Uh, another thing that will help sleep and lower stress in the evening is eating enough carbs with dinner and not eating dinner too early. I cannot tell you how many people, they're telling me I have sleep problems. I'm like, all right, let's break down your day. Show me everything you do. And, and I'm like, okay, Jesus, you're eating dinner at 6 p.m. And then you're going to bed at 10 p.m. Literally by 11, 12, you're, you're secreting cortisol to, to get your body to make glucose because you, you're, you're running out of or you're running low on glucose and glycogen in your liver. And that's what happens. Cortisol stress hormones kick in that probably can wake you up or make, uh, or make you have a poor night's sleep. And then this stress rhythm repeated over uh, days, months, years is what leads to disease at the end of the day. It's cor uh, cortisol is a big um, uh, cause of disease if you, if you actually start breaking down the mechanism. So getting your sleep sorted out Reducing your stress, super important. Eating enough, eating enough of the, all of the macronutrients for your body, enough protein, enough of the right types of fats. These are very important for the general rest restoration and repair of your body. So you have to do the basics right because if you don't, let's say you don't eat enough protein or enough carbs, literally the stress hormones kick in and they start uh, breaking down your muscle, your hard-earned muscle your precious bone mass, your, even your organs and even your brain can get atrophied by cortisol in order to keep your blood sugar stable because that's it's one of its two major imperatives is to keep your blood sugar stable. Otherwise, you, you, you will lose consciousness. You'll get into a coma. And it's, it's more important to keep you alive in that way and conscious than having you know nice big muscles or nice dense bones and that's what people are doing to themselves by living uh, uh, a suboptimal lifestyle in terms of all the stress caused because even psychological stress does this it raises cortisol so there's many ways to 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 define stress but at the end result is always the breaking down of our body self self cannibalization basically right so these are, these are some of the, the things, but you really, I know it's not really sexy to, to talk about these things, like diet, uh, rest, stress reduction, you know, um, having a, a shower filter to filter the chlorine out, having a reverse osmosis system to, uh, to um, uh, filter out all the toxins in the water, making sure you're eating organic food, making sure you have a HEPA air purifier in the bedroom, in the main living space, in your, maybe in your home office. Uh, making sure that you, you know, you try to drink out of glass instead of plastics. All these little things, again, they accumulate on a day, daily basis and over months, years and decades, they can wreak havoc in the body. And that's, again, why disease stats are the highest they've ever been. Yeah. And I find as well, sometimes the long term is really hard to sell for someone. They go, yeah, cool, I understand this, but I'm going to drink out of plastic because it's easy and convenient today. And yeah. as you mentioned, it's the accumulation of the little things that, that impact us down the track. And so what would you say to someone who's mm. like, eh, I've got time or that won't impact me or anything like that if they're not bought into, I guess, preserving and looking after themselves in the present for the future? Yeah, in fact, a lot of guys are like that, which is very 
makes working with a lot of men quite quite a difficult experience. I, I definitely have m- m- the majority of my clients are women, and I, I honestly I, I prefer working with women unless it's a really health conscious guy that is all about mm-hmm. optimization and stuff like that. Um, I would say then, yeah, it, it's a it's a, um, a question of filling those gaps of knowledge because if yeah. you don't if you don't understand that something is harmful of course you keep doing it that's why in my 20s i yeah. i lived like um the the opposite of of how i live now and had i known this information when i was even 17 18 it would have been just really an amazing thing i i probably could have been president of the world by now if 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 something like that or or maybe of mars or the solar system if if i had known all of these things were just impeding everything my sleep my recovery my brain health everything <clears throat> so with those people we have to educate them but if if they're not open to it, it it's it's um you, you have to let them you have to respect their journey and and kind of let them find out for themselves when they're ready they will probably either approach you or they will look for the information themselves um other than that i would probably say a lot of people the reason they cannot help themselves is they they may be in a state of learned helplessness. It's like, oh, it's the world is so toxic. We're all going to die of cancer. I might as well have fun with it. So that state of learned helplessness is really, um, it's really prevalent. And being, um, us being sort of an example to these people, especially when you have a story like mine where I was, I was on a on a trajectory to serious health problems in at least in my fifties, if not my forties. So, being a, a a good example is probably all that we can be to many people. Um, and those that are not ready to make these massive lifestyle changes, I would say do the biohacks, do the shortcuts. That's why I want to write this book because I know most people probably won't. Uh, get red LED light bulbs for the bedroom and then for for their kids' room and the the corridors and then be flipping with light switches and stuff like that. But I think many people will be able to spend, you know, $100 on a pair of blue blockers, uh, for example, right? Or most people won't fully remove all the the, uh, seed oils from their diet because that also means to to fully remove the seed oils from from your diet and your life, you literally have to cook pretty much every single meal and know exactly what goes into your food and most people are not prepared to that especially let's say if you're traveling for work or you you work in an office and you have to eat out well you're invariably going to get seed oils in your diet um so with those people i say look well then let's do the biohacks let's do the shortcuts get that vitamin e support your detoxification system with some supplements so yes you're still exposed to a lot of toxins but if it's too much of an effort to reduce all, all of these or most of these toxic exposures, at least give your body the building blocks it needs for the antioxidants and enzymes to excrete and detoxify all of these uh, toxins. So the, it all really depends on the age and the stage a person is in. And um, we, we just, I think at the end of the day, we have to accept that what is important to us right now, first of all, it wasn't probably 10 years ago, or maybe in 10 years, it won't be as important. So we have to respect that other people just have other priorities. And some are here for, for a quick and, quick and uh, awesome party and they want to check out fast. And, and, you know, was it live, live free, die young, leave a beautiful corpse, that kind of thing. Oh, wow. I like, I like that. And I, I guess what I'm hearing you saying as well, that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Like to your point, if it's, it, it's going to be pretty near impossible for some people to eliminate the seed oils. It's going yeah. Yes, if that's the case, there's still something you can do. And I think I'd love to stress that with the listeners too is is there's always something you can do. You always have options. And so don't let yeah. the all or nothing stop you from making some sort of progress. I mean, I take a totally. number of some of the supplements you've already mentioned because I've come to the conclusion there's some things in my lifestyle that for various reasons I can't change at this, at this particular point in time, but I'm still doing something about it. And yeah. I know like earlier some, in the yeah, Some sorry. women, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Some women, for example, if I if I tell a client, um, you know, would you consider stopping using hair dye? Uh, she'd be like, um, why don't you just bugger off, Chris? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So I, there's yeah. certain things we cannot, we cannot. My wife, I still, she still uses a bunch of products and, uh, uh, you know, personal care products. Some of them are not, are not organic. 
and no amount of studies that I give her, no amount of it. Just at, at this point, I don't want to create further conflict. So yeah. I just every day when I'm taking my supplements, I'm taking mine. I always leave on the table if we don't have dinner together or whatever. So she will always have a, two, three, five different things that will support her bones. They will support her detoxification system, her energy production, depending on what I feel is it, she needs right now. You know, in the winter, it could be a bit more vitamin D. Um, if we if we've been to to a restaurant today, it will be vitamin E, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, a, again, it's about what you said, s small steps here and there. You will never be able to to change everything. And let's just get on with our lives, take care of the big things, and um, you know the the other stuff. We will never be able to escape it. So let's accept it. Don't create further stress and cortisol. That is kind of like a nocebo effect out of that. And um, you know. The the rest uh, is in God's hands. Oh, I love that so much. And so how can someone take a really actionable step in the next 24 to 48 hours to improve their mental performance? You mentioned some really great tools. What's one thing someone can do in the next 24, 48 hours to improve their mental performance? Damn, I, the, I don't suppose that includes, because you, you can't really get a, por a product delivered that fast so it has to be something you can natural, order it, right though. you can order it <laughs> ah okay thank you that that thank you for the out <laughs> that makes things a bit easier i would say order if you really want a, a boost and you want to you want a fast same day boost when it comes i'd say order some alpha gpc or cdp choline whatever you can find uh and I, I don't I don't think I think most people would just feel it. I know you will. So I think that was probably that is probably the most powerful thing one can do to yeah. to quickly boost their mental performance. Amazing. And is there a particular websites that you recommend people check out or avoid? <laughs> um so the with Alpha GPC the problem is if it's very pure it it becomes liquid. So it it has to come as a, um, um, a dicalcium phosphate. So it's it you will never get it super pure, but I I take that hit. I'm kind of not not really too bothered because I'm in general good health. C CDP choline is you can, you may be able to find uh, powder if you look for powder to get it as clean as possible. Otherwise, um, the, you know uh, there's very few companies selling them. So the ones that do generally know what they're doing and the, and the supplements quality. Good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christian, for your time today and for sharing all of your wonderful insights and your learnings from your research. I've got two pages of notes all screwed out. I'm definitely going to go uh, have a look back and, and start to have a look at some red lights and a shower filter. I have so many little tools that I'm nice. going to explore for myself. So thank you so much. If someone is keen to learn more about your work and maybe sign up pre-sale to your book, <laughs> where can they do that thank you Mif uh, this was a pleasure talking to you um, yeah my website is christianjordanov.com that's where all my things can be found um, I haven't put the book on pre-sale but it <laughs> probably will I um, it's. I, I feel like it's the third day into it so I'm like just bursting with ideas I'm waking like I said I'm waking up early with ideas I'm, I'm scrambling to Where's my phone? I need to I need to write this down because I know if you don't write it down immediately, it's lost. Like literally yesterday, I had this awesome idea, and then a few minutes later, I was like, "Oh no, it's gone! I lost it!" I lost it. But uh, so uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll put the book on on presale soon. Uh, and um, yeah, ChristianYordanov.com is where to find me. Thank you so much. This was really fun, and um, uh, yeah, maybe we can do it again in the future, and maybe we can have you on my podcast as well. I would love that. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Christian. I'll pop those links down below as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of the Actually You Can podcast. I so enjoy having you here and I hope you've taken away powerful insights and tools that will support you to achieve your high level results. Now, before you go apply all of this wisdom in your life, I would be so grateful if you are able to leave us a podcast review on the platform that you're listening to or share this episode with a friend. Your support means that we can help more self-led, high-performing individuals just like you expand what's possible for them. 
I'd also love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. So please go on and shoot me a note on socials and let me know what you think. You can find me on Instagram at Miff Galloway. Now, go ahead and make those dreams a reality because actually you can.